Hello, MedSci 4300 students. Welcome to your fourth year. It is going to be a little bit different, but welcome as well to Healthcare Challenges and Scientific Inquiry for the 21st Century. Pretty long name for a course, but you know what? I like it because it captures everything. If you just heard that, that was my cat in the background being a jerk. I am doing this live, unfiltered. This is what's going on in the course. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Dr. Sarah McLean. This is me, super cute, like three years old. Give my older brother a hug because he's going off to school. I consider myself a lifelong nerd in that I have been in school forever. And I'm currently still in school. I'm doing my master's in education right now through UBC and I'm almost done. This picture on the right is me heading off to university. Um, I did my undergrad at the University of Waterloo. And no pictures were not all black and white then. I just thought it kind of looked nice. So that's why it's black and white. So yeah, I did four years at the University of Waterloo. Then I came here to do my PhD. You may know my PhD supervisor. His name is Dr. John DeGuglielmo. He is my science dad. Um, he also teaches and coordinates Phys 3140. So I want to tell you a few things. First of all, if I was going to do a street view of where I grew up, this is what would come up. Not even joking. This is in Mount Elgin, so I'm a very rural girl. So if you grew up in the sticks like me or in a more rural setting, I get you. I grew up on a horse farm, and really in my high school, I was one of only a few people that went on to university. So that's something that's maybe a little bit different. Something else to know is that I love coffee. The reason for this is that I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. They might be making surprise appearances sometimes during our Teams meetings or during other recordings. And I apologize in advance for that, but they are pretty cute. So, you know, you take one with the other. And finally, the last thing to know about me is that I love my job. My personal motto is kind of taken from, I think it's Lowe's, which is one of those home improvement stores and it's never stop improving. So like I said, right now I am doing my master's in education. I've been the faculty member in IMS along with Dr. Campbell. I've been employed here at Western since 2012 and I've been teaching 4300 and came up with 4300 and I've been involved in that for a few years now. So I wanted to pick your brain for a minute and talk about critical thinking. And I know a lot of the other profs are going to talk about critical thinking and saying, we need to teach our graduates to think critically. But what I want you to think about is take a step back. And what does that mean? Does that mean, oh, okay, I know the, you know, how the signal transduction cascade happens in this particular cell, or I know the fundamental aspects of molecular biology. That's good. That's not critical thinking. When we're talking about critical thinking, we're kind of stepping back a little bit. We will look at a claim. We will look at the evidence and the reasoning to give the explanation. So throughout this course, we're going to challenge a lot of common claims and look at the evidence and look at the reasoning and see if that fits with the explanation. And what you might find is that maybe these don't, those don't always add up. So as students in this course, for the claim, I want you to think about what do you know? For the evidence, how do you know that? What basis are you looking at this information from? And for the reasoning, you have to think about why does your evidence support your claim? Now, this course is a little bit tricky in that it's a little bit different. I'm not going to give you answers in this course because, frankly, we talk about problems that are not answerable in a textbook. We're going to talk about things like addiction and homelessness and socioeconomic status and health and how that is such, can be such an issue. So I'm going to give you problems. And I'm relying on you as being intelligent, capable, awesome students that we're going to come up with solutions together. And term by term, those solutions might look a little bit different, but I can tell you that every year I am so inspired by what it is that you guys come up with. So what does 4300 look like then? Well, there's going to be independent learning. Um, this is not just because we are in the COVID area, but even before this course was fully online, I had students do independent online modules, and then we would talk about it in class. 
So really, we're going to use the same format now. The only difference is that basically the quote unquote in class portion is going to be virtual through Microsoft Teams. A large part of this course is working with the team on a community, community, excuse me, engaged to learning project. So basically, you are going to be working with a group of about four to six other students on a project with a community partner that is directly going to impact the learning community. And finally, scientific communication is really important, right? To be able to communicate effectively with a wide audience is important, not just to, you know, dispel different scientific myths, but also some of the community partners that we're working with, some of their clients might have higher or lower levels of health literacy. And we really need to think about that when we're creating different materials for them. We're going to think reflectively a lot. We're going to think about what is the role of scientists in promoting health? You're getting a science undergrad degree. I know that many of you want to go on to the healthcare field, but what is it that we expect scientists to do? Do we just, you know, sit on the bench and pipette and pump out data, or should there be more to it than that? I want you to think about the quality of study and what are you using to kind of assess that, especially when you're making your claims and developing your evidence for a particular argument. Finally, we're going to be talking about a few hot topics. And by that, I mean things that are really challenging in the learning community. Opioid abuse, socioeconomic status, a link between marijuana and schizophrenia. And yes, there is a link between marijuana and schizophrenia, but we'll talk about it a little bit later in this course. Essentially, this what, how this course is set up is that you're going to complete online work on OWL. You can see it. It's basically what I have is, quote unquote, the pre-lecture work. Many times in class, though not always, we're going to have a guest speaker because I think it's really important to get other types of input and experiences in the course, not just a professor talking at you, but somebody who actually has a lived experience of whatever it is that we're talking about that particular week. And finally, when you come to class, it's not just going to be a boring Zoom meeting. First of all, what I can tell you is that we're going to be working through Microsoft Teams. And I'll give you a little tutorial on how to use Microsoft Teams if you haven't yet. But I used it this past summer and I loved it. I thought it was great. The second thing to consider is that throughout this course, kind of percolating in the background, you're going to be working on your CEL project and you're going to be populating your ePortfolio. So really, your ePortfolio for me is this kind of culmination of what you've done this class. It's going to be a website, more or less, where you can show somebody and like, hey, what was MedSci 4300 all about? What did you do? What did you learn? You'd be like, here it is. Let me show you exactly what I took away from this. So to really speak to and highlight some of the awesome things that you did in this course. Now, in terms of the evaluation, this is always a really important part. So because we're totally virtual, the discussion forum posts and reflections are going to be a form or a component of your mark. And I'll talk about the reflection part and what kind of makes up a quote unquote good reflection later on. Your CEL project is a big chunk of this course. You can see 45%. Now that is just not one take it and leave it 45%. There are multiple components to that. You can see that in the syllabus. But the reason I showed it like this is because I want you to know that the CEL project is a really, really important component of this course. Towards the beginning of the course, you're going to write an essay on health or science literacy, basically some kind of misconception and how issues with health or science literacy um, contributed to that issue. So for example, um, I had this student a few years ago and she did this really great essay um, on different types of probiotics and whether or not probiotics were kind of the be all end all of health or if you needed to delve a little bit deeper. So you're going to look at a maybe controversial kind of claim and investigate it by using primary scientific literature. You're going to have a take home test in November talking about some of those challenging issues that we um, highlight throughout the course, such as opioid use, socioeconomic status. And then finally, you have an e-portfolio, and that will be due at the end of the term. Now, if you're looking through here, you might be going, wait a minute, Dr. McLean, 
I do not see a final exam. That is correct. There is no final exam in this course because honestly, I don't think it really adds a lot to what we're trying to do in this course. So what do you want me to do now? I want you to go to the discussion forum. I want you to go. I want you to share things about yourself. There's a prompts in there that you can look through and really get to know your classmates. As I mentioned, I'm doing my master's of education through UBC and I'm doing it totally online, which is kind of cool because for this whole COVID thing going on, it's given me lots of different ideas about how to do this. And one thing that I have realized is the discussion forums and different types of informal chat that I've had with my peers in those courses have been really helpful for me, you know, kind of feeling a sense of community and getting to know one another. So go to the discussion forum and post. You can see that I have a little prompt there. And like I said, I'm going to see you guys virtually in class through Microsoft Teams. Prior to that, you can expect a quick little video about easiest ways to use Microsoft Teams that I'm probably just going to do a screen capture. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon.